Hello and welcome to Practically Closure with me, John Stevenson. Thank you very much for joining me. Uh, so this week we're going to continue our study around the closure spec. Um, so a way to define contracts, specifications for uh, data and functions. And uh, so we've seen that in the previous videos. One of the interesting things with having a spec around functions is that once you have that specification, you can use the, the specification for generating uh, tests. So you have unit tests uh, for your code, and they are only as good as like the person writing those tests as well. So there's uh, you need to manage to capture lots of different edge cases usually in when you're writing tests. It's very easy to miss things and also to write uh, a very comprehensive tests is a lot of code to uh, to manage and so using generative testing uh, which actually generates a whole series of different can random uh, test data it's much more likely that you'll pick up uh, uh, bugs and issues with your code especially around like edge cases things you wouldn't have thought of yourself uh, it's very easy to generate those uh, from the specifications you've created. And there are built-in generators into uh, Clojure uh, Test Check. And so you can uh, generate yeah, a whole range of specifications with very little effort on your part. And you can also generate your own generators. And you can even use generators to generate generators. But uh, that's a little bit out of scope of what we're going to cover today. Uh, okay, so we're going to have a look at uh, spec before we start, though, just a reminder that all the code, oops, uh, all the uh, videos and code is available on the Practically website and uh, along with the live broadcasts there's some playlists there to help you find uh, relevant details we've covered quite a lot of different topics there uh, and so if you're practicing if you want to just practice closure then the four closure guides are really good for helping you just try out different ways of using closure uh, and then we've got the books so i've been doing some work so practically space max most of that's done now uh, there's always new little bits to add uh, and there's some really interesting stuff around uh, Maggot, the Git client for uh, Space Max in there as well. And I've been adding more to the Practically Closure this week as well around spec. And if you want to get in touch, then it's the Closure in Slack Practically channel. And then uh, sponsoring and keeping me motivated, there's means to do that here. So I mentioned the Practically Closure book. And I've added these... Uh, content ideas and badges in here so you can see how active the books actually are um, so there's a lot of different things I've been adding to uh, the book and if you have any suggestions feel free to uh, just click on new issue and suggest things that you'd like me to uh, add to the book and the book itself so practically uh, github.io closure uh, and then this I've been looking I've been adding closure spec to this recently uh, so there's a section here on spec and generative testing. Uh, and it's probably worth just a very quick recap in what we've done so far. So this is what uh, this section is, is covering so far. Um, so showing how to uh, run spec in a REPL, just how to require that. Uh, and then also how to, how to add spec into uh, closure projects just by using the require. Ooh. Um, and also how to uh, like include the require for testing specifications as well, because uh, there's spec uh, and then there's uh, uh, spec test. Uh, so they're two different namespaces. If you're doing test as well, you'll need to include that. We'll see that in the examples we cover today. Um, and then I've kind of grouped uh, the specifications. I like to think of it specifications for data, um, although everything kind of can be thought of as data enclosure. Um, so it's a good foundation of where to start. Um, and then specifications for functions themselves. So this is more like a, a specific refinement of uh, what we're doing on top of data. So if you look at the spec data, this is kind of like the fundamentals of uh, spec. And here we've got, uh, yeah, the kind of the three 
the three main functions that I'm using inside uh, closure.spec.alpha. So there's conform, validate, and explain. Uh, and there are some uh, variations around these functions, especially around explain, uh, mainly on what type of uh, information that they return. And so we can conform a specification, which basically takes a specification and a value and tells you whether the value conforms to that. And if it does, then it's returning uh, what we call a, a conformed value. It's the same value. It just means that we know this value conforms to the specification that we've said. Uh, valid does the same thing, but it returns true or false. Uh, and explain tells you what goes wrong if your spec hasn't met the, uh, if your value hasn't met the specification. And we can define specs with predicate functions. And so in the book I've got, uh, I'm using clips, which is gives us some live evaluation. So we can go in and try uh, different code uh, uh, so we can see the like the predicates work you see the code working in real time so it's just like having a little REPL in the web page uh, and so we can use predicate functions which are just normal closure core predicate functions and there's uh, there's a big long list of all the predicates in there oh I've broken the link okay I'll fix that link but there's a big long list of predicate functions which I've got in the reference section here. Uh, yep, so there's a big long list here of predicate functions. Um, and uh, so there's uh, there's quite a lot actually. There's, I think there's about 80, 75 to 80 predicate functions in there. Uh, and so all these predicate functions are just returning either true or false given a value. And so those are the simplest uh, specifications we can use. So we can use int and seek and things like that for uh, specifications. And these are unnamed specifications. So these are just specifications we can just use. So we just quickly say, well, is is 42 an integer? Is the range uh, of uh, like with the argument for, is that gonna generate a sequence? So you can also use spec to help you explore uh, closure and understand it. And yeah, we can also use these uh, with uh, our own custom predicates. We can write our own custom code and generate our own custom predicates. So in this case, we're just comparing uh, is the value uh, equal to 42. So we're passing in the value uh, and uh, that's our own uh, simple uh, predicate because it's just returning either true or false. And that's just the shorthand syntax for that as well. Um, so we can use predicates for our simple specifications. We can use literal values. This is just like using a set. Uh, so saying here we've got a set, and does the value is the value contained within inside that uh, specification, which is a bit like using contains in from closure core. Um, so it's the same kind of approach. So this again gives a, a um, true or false value. Uh, and then we've got conform, valid, explain, some more examples there. And then defining specs. So we uh, we kind of looked at using specifications. Uh, and then once we've got the specifications we want, if we give them a name, then they become usable throughout the uh, project. Uh, and also if we in, want to write a library with specifications in there as well, then people can use those name those uh, the specifications by giving them a fully qualified name so we can define uh using spec def rather than just the uh, closure core def um, so i've included uh, closure spec alpha in here uh, and giving it an alias of spec so now we can call spec alpha uh, closure dot spec dot alpha def just by doing spec def and uh, this is my uh, spec, this is the name of the specification, uh, and this is how uh, this is like the algorithm of the specification. In this case, we're just using a simple predicate. So the name is is just a keyword, uh, but ideally this is a, a fully qualified keyword, so we can give it a full name. So this is the full name of the current namespace. Although I could give it a different fully qualified name as well if I wanted to. Although uh, it, it kind of does help organize your code better if you're defining a fully qualified name um, inside the namespace that it's defined in. 
And you can do you can also do this uh, using the auto resolve macro. We've seen this in some examples. So we can just use a double colon rather than specifying practically dot closure or whatever the, the namespace is. We use a double colon. This is a macro that will expand. And you see it's expanded to the, the namespace, which is the namespace that we defined here at the uh, top. So each of these pages in the book is like a uh, is like a project in itself. So it, once you leave the page, then it forgets everything. But everything you define in the page is all part of the same uh, kind of REPL. And so here we've got namespace uh, practically closure. So if we use the auto resolve, then it's just putting automatically putting practically closure in front of the the actual uh, name of the keyword. So that saves an awful lot of time. And then obviously if we refactor our specifications into different uh, namespaces, then we don't have to go around and change all the uh, the names. If we're using auto resolve, it will just update. Uh, it will just use the new uh, namespace that it's in. Uh, and then we've got a registry of things as well. So just, uh, we covered this before, just how to, when you actually use something, it goes into a registry and then you can also remove things from the registry as well specifically and if you want to get rid of everything obviously then the easiest way is to just restart the REPL because uh, there's no there's no persistence in there once the REPL is closed or once your application is closed obviously all the specifications are, uh, are no longer available you have to start and load everything up again um, covered map literals so map literals so basically you can use maps with uh, keywords in and uh, again we if we just use a symbol single colon it's not giving uh, the namespace but if we use auto resolve we can use this hash colon colon which is a bit like the colon colon in front of a, a name except it will apply you can see here it's applying the namespace to all of the keys inside the map so again that helps us save a bit of time and a lot of typing uh, and a lot of refactoring and uh, it, it makes it uh, easier. So yeah, so we can either explicitly include namespaces uh, into the keywords or we can use the auto resolve uh, to do that for us. Uh, oh, and if you, so here we're picking up the uh, practically dot closure, which is the, the namespace we've got here. So this is that we can just define the, I'm using pretty much the same namespace uh, in all of these, unless there's a, a reason to have a, a specifically different one. So this is picking up practically closure from this namespace definition, and it's applying it to, it's automatically picking up the, the namespace it's in and applying it to all the keys inside the keyword, inside the map. Uh, but we can also specify uh, keywords uh, so that we specify our own kind of fully qualified keyword. So here we're using just the hash colon, a hash in front of the, um, the kind of domain part of the keyword. Uh, and this is applying that specific one. Uh, so even though we're in practically dot closure, or we can use practically naming or, or any other kind of name in front of all these other keywords uh, and that gets applied there as well. So you can be quite flexible in how you actually package up your specs. Although obviously if you're uh, aligning yourself to uh, uh, namespaces or key keywords that are relevant to the namespaces which they're defined in, then that makes code easier to uh, find and follow as well. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, uh, did I? Oh, yes, there we go. I found a bug there. There we go. I'll fix that. Um, and with these, uh, if you haven't used clips before, you can use these uh, pages and you can change the code as much as you want. And if you break things or want to reset things, you just reload the page and it sets things back to normal. So now I've got that, uh, that bug back. I'll, I'll fix that in the source code. And then we looked at uh, specs, composing specs and hierarchical specs. Um, uh, 
there. So we've already covered that in previous videos, so I'm not going to go there. This is just a reminder of what we've actually done. But yeah, so specs are quite flexible. So here, if we're using a hierarchical specification, then we've basically got uh, a map and some of the values are, uh, rather than single values, they're, they're maps themselves as well. So by combining uh, a spec uh, that we've already defined as a map, so we've already defined customer data, customer details as a map uh, earlier on uh, using the spec keys. Uh, and if we include that in another spec keys, then obviously we're going to have a map and customer details is going to be a map there as well. Uh, so that I think that did catch me out initially because I, I kind of thought that uh, the key here would represent all the individual specs. But if you want the individual specs, then you just compose them together uh, and just add them directly. Uh, did I put that in here? Yeah, we go. Yeah, so we just basically have spec keys and just have all the individual uh, specifications there. Uh, and it all adds them for you. And then uh, spec functions. So spec, we build on what we've done for the data with spec functions. And so we can uh, uh, do define a specific specification uh, for a specific function. And we can define a sp uh, function, f uh, sorry, a specification for the arguments and the return values, and also the relationship between those two. Uh, and this gives us additional documentation, and then we can instrument those functions. So we can choose whether we want to check that when we call those functions that um, uh, the arguments are correct, the arguments are checked against the specification. Uh, and we can also more importantly use that for generative testing, which is what we're going to look at in a moment. Uh, so we can do uh, close spec alpha fdef to define functions. And this provides us uh, some ex uh, some documentation. So we can go, we can see the specification in the documentation. Um, and we can also even do uh, specifications for uh, higher order functions as well. So let's have a look at, I haven't quite finished this yet, but um, so essentially we're kind of writing, as we're during development, we're writing uh, uh, predicate functions that we can also check for uh, FDEF arguments. So that's what we're going to look at now. And so once we create uh, uh, our FDEF, that's just adding documentation to it. And then we can run tests on it using function names uh, and then generative testing. We'll have a look at an example project as well uh, on that as well. So let's jump into the code I've been working on. Uh, so there's, I put in the chat. Uh, oops, where is it? Where is it? Uh, no, that's not it. Yep. So if you go to practically repository where all my code is, uh, spec, there should be a spec generative testing project. So if you haven't already got this, uh, I think I, I did put a link into the chat about, about this. Uh, so I've created um, in here, I've got this spec generative testing, which is a bit of a, um, a design document. Oh, have I not pushed the, I've got some changes I haven't pushed. Let me check. Uh, uh, oh yes, I haven't pushed those yet. There we go. Uh, oh. Boom. Uh, boom. Uh, uh, oh, I haven't done a quit. What am I doing? Uh, coding there we go uh, push that uh, if you haven't seen it before this is maggot uh, the git client inside emacs it's very nice to use uh, so we switch back to the project um, 
So we've got the uh, spec generative testing. This is our like design journal, and then the finished uh, results of the code I've created. I've got a uh, a card game, uh, which is the kind of the business logic, the the function, just the normal functions I've defined, uh, which uh, is very simple. It's just a few, just a couple of functions in there and a helper function. Uh, and then we've got the uh, specifications, which I've separated out as well. So I'm going to walk through the journal and show you how we got to these specifications. Okay, uh, so I've got this, I've just created a project using uh, control uh, CLJ new. And uh, this is just a depths.in project. So you will need the closure CLI tools. Uh, and the only uh, extra depths, so we've got the closure depths in there already, so closure dependency. Uh, so we'll need closure like 1.10 ideally. Uh, 1.9 should probably work, um, but 1.10.1 .1 is the latest stable. And then I've added the extra paths, so test, uh, and then we've got this test check uh, dependency in here as well. So this is version one. Uh, and this is just included as an alias uh, called uh, as part of the test alias here. We've just added this extra dependency uh, in uh, to the project because uh, there are some so the the generators and the uh, the check function itself are part of uh, closure.spec.test.alpha. So that that namespace is part of this uh, library that we'll need to include. And so I've included um, closure spec alpha. That's part of the closure library itself already. So you don't need to include anything, uh, any dependencies specifically for, for closure spec. Uh, but closure spec gen alpha uh, for the generators and for test. That's why we need the uh, closure uh, spec, uh, closure test uh, uh, dependency, because it includes those namespaces. Um, and so what I've done for Emacs is um, I just basically told CIDR, the, um, the tool I use to run my uh, REPLs, just to use the test alias. So this is just like using uh, closure minus A colon test. And that loads in the, uh, the, the test check library for me. So this is just a DIR locals for Emacs. And uh, if you're not using Emacs, then you just need to make sure you're selecting the uh, the test alias when you're running your REPL. Okay, let's have a look at generating some code. So my REPL, is it running? I think it's running. Oh, it's not running. There we go. So we'll start my REPL. So it's going to decide to jack in. Uh, oh, why does it go to sibling? Uh, let's get rid of that. Let's clean my repls up. There we go. Uh, kill. Uh, okay, there we go. Boom. Let's start the repl up. So you see it's using the uh, the test alias in the repl. Uh, so we've got, uh, so we're basically doing, uh, we're running the closure. Uh, uh, commands uh, with test uh, and then the cider is just adding these specific dependencies to make it work and be able to uh, talk to the REPL. Uh, so we've got generators. So we've included this uh, spec uh, closure spec gen alpha namespace and just alias that as uh, spec gen. Uh, and so we can get uh, a, a specific uh, type of generator uh, based on uh, a specification. In this case, uh, int is our specification. We've covered the predicates, uh, uh, using predicates as a specification. Um, so we get the, the relevant generator uh, from the by yeah by giving it uh, the predicate, uh, and then it will generate uh, test data for uh, that specific specification. Hopefully, let's see if this is works. 
there we go. So it's generating, in this case, we're just generating a single uh, result. So it's going to do that over and over again. And we get all the kind of every single possible uh, um, value that is going to satisfy that particular specification is generating. So it's also a good way to generate uh, some mock data as well if you were. Uh, if you want, uh, if you need to use that. Uh, oh. So uh, here we can see that we're uh, always going to generate the same value because for the spec uh, for nil, uh, if we get that spec, then the only value that's going to satisfy that uh, specification uh, is nil. Um, so it's just generating nil every time. Um, when we strings, then it's going to generate, um, it was just generating collection of uh, strings. Uh, and so again, it's, it's generating all sorts of different random ones. You can see that it's generating uppercase, lowercase combinations. Uh, numbers in state strings as well so it's quite uh, comprehensive and it's just generating these uh, randomly and it's generating them very quickly as well and here we've got a, a spec for um, a card game we're going to use this card game as an example as we go through these uh, so here we've got a specification. Uh, um, we're going to get a generator for this specification. The specification itself is a set. So we saw that we were using a set um, as a as a specification because it's going to return. Uh, yeah, it's going to return true or false. Oh, it's going to return uh, true or false basically uh, if the value inside there is inside the set is in there, then it's uh, passing the spec. If it's not inside there, then it's failing the spec. So when we generate uh, some sample data, uh, then it's uh, generating a range of uh, data that will satisfy the specification. Uh, is there anything in there? No, there's nothing interesting in there. Um, so one thing I should mention is like so I've used generate and I've used sample uh, and so generate is just giving a single value back uh, and so this is going to give um, a single value that meets the specification and sample is giving uh, a, a kind of range of values, a sample of values, as it were, <laughs> hence the name. And uh, and so you can see that, uh, yeah, that's giving kind of uh, more information you can, uh, that's satisfying the specification. And so here we've got a spec specification that's got, um, uh, that's more involved. Uh, and we're still kind of able to generate that because it's, it's still using uh, so known predicates, it's using keywords and it's using numbers. We're just combining these, uh, so we're not creating any uh, uh, really custom uh, specifications yet. So it's still very easy to just generate them. So we can combine specifications and we can still generate uh, specifications for those combined uh, specs. Neat. So spec gen is very useful. Uh, and as I mentioned before, if you need to write your own generator as well, that's perfectly possible. Uh, and uh, we'll have a look at that perhaps in a later video. Uh, okay. Ooh. So we're going to walk through an example card game. So this game, so this, uh, the rest of the code is kind of covering um, so the specifications for a card game and then how we generate 
uh, some sample data and then how we uh, kind of instrument uh, the game as well. So we got the, uh, we've got a couple of uh, defs here who are just defining uh, suit and rank, which are kind of like a, uh, I can names for these predicates we've got here as well. So it saves us typing out uh, all the set. We can just use a name of suit to represent the sets and the same for rank. We're just using uh, rank to uh, capture all the different uh, possible uh, card values. So when you look at a card, you see uh, it's of a particular suit. So it's either a club, clubs, diamonds, hearts, or spades. Uh, and then it's the value of the card is between uh, two and 10. So we use range, range if you remember is uh, exclusive of the last value. So this will generate a range from two to 10, uh, which are the playing card numbered, the numbered playing cards. And then we've got playing cards, which are Jack, Queen, King, and Ace. Uh, so Ace is like one. Um, and so we're just basically using into to just to easily just do a, a reduced conj into uh, putting the individual numbers from range into uh, this uh, set. So we've basically got a unique set of values uh, from ace to what, two, two to 10, and then queen, king, uh, uh, jack, queen, king, um, and there as well. Um, so if we actually have a look at rank, boop. Oh. oops, wrong button. Then you see uh, they're not in the right order as we would like to see them, but it doesn't matter because it's a set. Um, so we've got all the numbers, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, And then we've got Jack, uh, Queen, King, and Ace. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, so that sets up kind of some basics for what a card looks like. And then we've got playing card, which is basically um, a two values, uh, a specification with two values, uh, rank. So a card has to have a rank and it has to have a suit. Um, what did I do there? What's wrong with that? Uh, Oh, I didn't evaluate suit. Oops. There we go. Uh, okay. And so then, uh, yeah, so if we want a playing card, it has to be uh, of this form. Uh, so this is a, yeah, so this is a name spec. We're defining a name spec just using the uh, double colon playing card. And the same thing for dealt hand. So building on specifications we've already created each time. So playing card is using suit and rank. Dealt hand is using playing card. So the hand that you're dealt, it has one or more playing cards in there or no playing cards in there, but it can't have a an incorrect playing card. That's gonna generate a false result. Uh, uh, and then we've got uh, some player specifications uh, here. So we've got uh, name, uh, then we've got score. So we're gonna keep a score for a particular player. And we're gonna have, uh, a player is going to have uh, a, it's gonna be represented by a map. So the spec keys defines a map and it's got required values inside the map. So it has to have the required keys of name, score and dealt hand. So this is defining yeah, what our player should look like. Um, so the map could have other keys in there as well. Uh, that would still specify, that would still satisfy the spec, but it has to have uh, at least sort of the name, score and dealt hand keys. Uh, if it doesn't, then it's not going to pass the specification because these are required. And we saw before we could also add optional uh, uh, keys in there as well if you wanted to and then the specification uh, for a card deck 
is basically just any number of playing cards. So this is not a kind of certified deck uh, that's got 52 cards. This is kind of just a like the current deck of cards that you're using for the game. It most likely will have uh, 52 cards, but it, all the cards that are in this uh, are in the deck have to be a a legitimate playing card spec. Uh, that conform to that specification and then the players is just a duplication well it's just one or more players or zero or more players uh, but they again they have to be a, a player format so they have to be a player map otherwise it's going it's not going to satisfy the spec and then we've got the game is just a combination of the players and the deck and obviously as the players are taking uh, cards from the deck then the deck is going to have fewer cards in it, but it still has uh, uh, all the all the things that are inside the deck all have to be uh, playing cards there as well. So you could kind of exclude. Uh, so at the moment we're not including the Joker card, so that's not part of the deck. So in our game, we're not using we're not considering the the Joker card as uh, a valid card. Um, and so uh, that would throw up a, and we'd be able to catch that with the specifications. So that's the, it's quite a few, but it, it it's kind of like they they do kind of comprehensively define uh, all the things for a a card game, uh, and all sorts of lots of different card games as well. So you could use these specifications for like the fundamentals of uh, specify uh, specking up uh, a range of card games. Uh, and so now we've got our specifications, we can generate uh, values for that. So I've already done that here as well. Uh, 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 oops, did I not? I didn't evaluate all of these, did I? Oops. Player. What's gone wrong? This was working before. Huh? Have I changed the name of that? No. Uh, so player. Uh, oh, name. Did I change what? Score. What? Oh, for some reason it's not evaluating. Oh, did I evaluate them in a different order? Maybe. Not sure. Uh, let's try these again. Uh, so, and let's do. So, this player is made up of dealt hand and string and score. Okay. There we go. Woo! Live coding. It's always scary. Uh, so here we can see it's generated a map. It's qualified map. So we've got the uh, the fully qualified namespace in front of the map, uh, and then we've got name, score, and dealt hand. And so the dealt hand is just a, uh, a kind of a collection of uh, cards, and each card is represented by uh, a a vector with a, a um, with the the, the rank. And the suit. So it's very easy to take all our like, combined uh, specs and generate uh, values for them. And we can do the same thing for a game. Oh, it works this time. Yes. Uh, and so this is just, yeah, this is including players. So we've got a fully qualified map. Uh, and this is the map of uh, players and the, the value for players is a map itself uh, and so there's a map or yes yeah, there's a couple of maps in there for different players and each player has a different name as well so it's very easy to generate all that data for us very very quickly 
So we can use this uh, yeah, to help us actually build our uh, functionality as we're going along. We can just generate. So if you're writing your specs first, you can generate mock data to help you uh, like use with your unit tests and, and testing out your functions in the REPL as well. Uh, so it's very useful for doing that. Um, but also as you kind of mature your development, then you start writing specifications for functions themselves. And because we've got all these specifications defined, these these values that we're, we've got specifications for, they're going to be used with the functions that we write. So we write another specification for the functions we're developing, and then we can test to ensure that the uh, values we're passing into a function when we call them are correct as well. Um, so here we've got a function uh, which basically just generates a kind of regulation card deck. Uh, so it basically just generates uh, a card for every single combination of uh, uh, suits and um, uh, players uh, and uh, Uh, and then we've got the deal cards. Uh, again, this is just um, just developing this. This is basically um, a function I want to develop, and we want deal cards, which takes a game, and would write some logic in here that would um, uh, basically update the game uh, and give uh, uh, additional cards or replacement cards to uh, the players in the game. Uh, and we can start writing, uh, as we're developing these functions, we can start writing uh, like an fdef uh, specification uh, in front of that as well. Uh, so we, here we've got uh, one for deal cards. And we're just going to uh, initially check. So this is kind of like writing a, a unit test first before you're writing the function. So we're defining what the arguments are. Uh, we've got that as a game. Uh, return we want to return a game i mean we are kind of doing that here initially so we've got a test that kind of just returning the game so this is going to satisfy this particular thing but as we develop the algorithm we want to keep on making sure that we're actually still returning the right game structure so this return uh, specification will make sure that as we develop deal cards then we're always going to be returning a game otherwise we're going to get a uh, uh, a specification error. Uh, and then we can just define a relationship uh, between these two as well. Um, so basically we, we're just showing that we can, we're taking in a, a game and we're returning uh, a game as well. So as we've got the fdef uh, deal cards specification, we can actually use that spec to uh, um, to test our function uh, with that. Uh, because once we've got an fdef, then we can generate, uh, we can use the arguments that we've got here. Uh, so the argument specification we have, we can take that specification um, and, and generate it. So that's the that's specification we use uh, to get a generator that can uh, create uh, a whole range of mock data and it will then kind of generate this the the specifications for us and, and test it against uh, uh, the fdef so here we've got um, uh, this uh, test uh, spec test check uh, so if we jump back just back to the top of the page for initially so we've got uh, a spec test, uh, which we've seen um, included. So this is our spec test uh, check function. And this is going to take uh, a symbol that we're going to uh, uh, check. So this symbol is the uh, the name of the, uh, the FDEF specification. So we've got deal cards. And, uh, and so this is going to run, this generates, I'll start this running. Um, and then explain it because it does take a little time. Uh, oh, I didn't evaluate these. Sorry. Whoops. 
You've got to evaluate your code, otherwise it doesn't do anything. There we go. Right, so we've evaluated the, uh, the specification. Uh, and now this is going to run off. Um, if I open up my REPL, uh, you can see it's uh, it's going around and around. It's generating a lot of spec data because it's actually doing, uh, it's actually gen generate like a thousand different values against the specification. Uh, and the specification is is a uh, is a game, so it's uh, it's a combination of all our uh, basically all our specs. So there's uh, there's a little bit of work to do there. Um, so it does take a few. I think it takes about like 60, 70 seconds to to run, uh, but it is getting a, a thousand values for all the different specs. So that's quite uh, it's quite a bit of work. <clears throat> But this will go off and uh, yeah, this is kind of like doing uh, very comprehensive unit testing on the deal cards uh, function. And so when we actually have a proper uh, algorithm, then it's also going to be testing that algorithm there too as well. Because what uh, what spec check is doing is it takes the <clears throat> uh, takes the spec uh, for the arguments and generates all the test data. And then it's using that test data to, to make sure that um, the return value and the uh, the function that defines the association between the args and the return value, that's all working correctly for our implementation of uh, deal cards. So it does do a fair bit of work. However, this is quite, and, and so when it returns, it's going to return, um, just, oh, there we go return this uh, spec that it's used to generate um, the uh, all the test data and it's showing that it's using uh, it's, it's showing those results of checking the return and so the results are true so all, all the all the values have passed the specification that it's generated uh, so they're so all the all the values that we passed into the deal cards function uh, have all worked um, obviously because we're just returning a, a game data so we'd expect it to work and uh, you can see here we've run a thousand uh, had a, fa a thousand different data um, points to, um, to test and so you could you can crank this up or or crank it down as much as you want to so you can just run one test that you could run I guess I'm not quite sure how many what the maximum tests you could run are or, what, or what's kind of actually relevant but um, depending where you are in the development phase then you can tweak the number of tests and obviously if you want to just a very quick one then you just run like one or ten or a hundred uh, test data points uh, if you've got a very sensitive kind of path you might want to run uh, far more uh, tests uh, far more data points through your uh, uh, specs and then showing us how long it's taking uh, as well and just confirming uh, the uh, kind of symbol it's actually testing. So this is the the FDEF specification that we're actually uh, using to generate the test uh, test data, and uh, and it's uh, obviously that's the naming convention is the same as. So we've written uh, FDEF. The the naming convention uh, is to use the same name as uh, the 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 specific the function definition that we're uh, writing the spec for. So these two names are the same. Um, and so then when we just do check, then it's just checking deal cards specification against the deal cards uh, function. Uh, okay, uh, how to run different numbers test. This did trip me up initially. Um, but uh, I eventually found the uh, with a bit of help, I found how to do this. Uh, <clears throat> so, if you look at spec check, uh, excuse me. <clears throat> uh, if you look at the uh, down the bottom, you can see the uh, the fun uh, function signature. Uh, so for check. We can give it nothing, or we can give it uh, a symbol. Um, we can give it a symbol with options. 
And so we can pass in uh, an optional map when we're calling a check on a, a function specification. And here we're passing in uh, a, a fully qualified kind of map. Uh, and so that's using a uh, number. And um, we've got this option called num tests. And so we can specify how many tests we actually want to run uh, by, by doing this. And so if we run this, then it comes back straight away uh, with uh, the results. So it's a very quick thing you can do while you're testing. So you can do this in the uh, in the REPL as you're developing your code. You can just run a simple check uh, and you don't have to wait for like a minute or so for it to run. And obviously you can run it uh, a few times yourself and see it's passing every time, which is good. Uh, and then you could obviously do a larger number of tests. Well, even a hundred tests still is pretty quick. It's just a couple of seconds. Uh, and so uh, that's uh, it's very reasonable to do like 10 to 100 kind of tests while you're while you're developing. Um, and you can also get a little test report as well, just summarizing the results. Uh, so here, so if you're running a, a, a range of uh, tests, then you can kind of specify yeah, how many results it's running, how many uh, how many are actually passed. If you just want a, a simple summary, you don't need to know all the details that uh, uh, check is actually returning. You can summarize all the results uh, there as well. So it's just like having a little uh, unit test report. Then we go on to uh, yeah, develop more uh, functions to do different things and we write functions uh, to uh, and we write a specification for each of those functions we're defining as well but we can also use and I mentioned this before we can also use uh, spec generate to help us kind of write, write some mock data to help us develop these functions as we're going along so writing a uh, winning players uh, so it's going to take in a, a list of players and it's going to return a player uh, as a result as the, who's actually won the game. And so uh, we could just like spec return a specific uh, specification from that. So this is just uh, the, the value uh, we would use. This is like a valid specific valid value against the specification for a player. So what a player looks like. So rather than type it all out, we could actually use our uh, spec gen generator to actually just generate uh, player values for us. Uh, so this is just going to generate a different uh, value each time. So we could just copy paste that into our functions, but even better, we could just actually just put that into our functions as we're developing them. And uh, we've got some uh, mock data uh, in here that's generated from a player. So we, we know we're not kind of tripping over simple typos when we're testing uh, the development of our, our functions. Uh, okay, so let's have a look at how we've put this together. So I've got the uh, card game in here. Um, and so, uh, oh yes, I could put that. That's just a bit that we. Uh, so as I'm developing this, I can replace this. Uh, oops. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, with the spec gen, uh, and I just need to include that uh, namespace in there as well. But I'd probably remove these as I actually develop the the actual algorithm. I'd remove the the spec gen stuff and eventually the. The spec gen namespace from here as well and just keep this uh, as our functions as our kind of like application code and then i just put all the uh, game card specifications into the game card specifications um, namespace uh, and so we're including we're including test uh, alpha uh, spec dot test in here as well uh, and uh, as well as the card games. So just like we're doing the unit testing, we're including the 
the business logic uh, here. It just, here it just says card game. Uh, so all the functions there we're going to use, because we're going to write uh, a FDEF specifications for those, so we should include those in here. And we've got spec alpha and spec test. And we've got all the specifications we've done. So we've got the card specifications, player specifications, game specifications, and then function specifications. So I've started to write a kind of winning player here as well. And um, here we're taking in um, uh, players into the, that's the argument. Uh, and so we can write a, um, so, so when we can, so when we, uh, we can test this now with the uh, check to make sure uh, we actually are, our algorithm, as we're developing our alg algorithm for winning players is actually uh, correct. Because we take players and we return a player. And I hope you find a, so again, these are all optional, so we can define which ones we actually want. Uh, but if, we, if we're going to use check, then we'll need to have at least uh, args and return. Uh, otherwise, there's nothing for, uh, if we don't have args, there's nothing for the uh, uh, spec test check to actually generate uh, data from. Uh, and if there's no return, then there's nothing for us to check the results are uh, still within the uh, that game specification. And once we've defined a whole series of functions, uh, we can also uh, instrument those functions. Uh, so we've seen instrument before where we're basically just doing um, instrument and then we give it a function specification. And then when we call that function, uh, well, as we're developing, then it's going to automatically check uh, just the arguments. So this is a kind of simpler version of uh, check. It's only checking to see when we call the functions that um, it's actually doing, uh, it's actually, we're passing the right argument values, the right values for, to satisfy the argument spec. And so as we're going to have a, a number of uh, FDEF uh, function definitions, uh, specifications, then what we can do is actually just, as we're building up, just create a little uh, name, uh, function specifications, and then we put in the individual uh, FDEF uh, specifications we want to instrument. And then we can just have here, we've just got two little help functions just to in, in, uh, instrument all functions. So we could kind of still go in and just do uh, spec uh, test uh, instruments. Uh, and then we can specify a particular um, uh, function, uh, so spec spe uh, specify a specific specification. That's a bit of a mouthful. Uh, def oh, uh, deal cards. Um, but rather than having lots of these uh, individual uh, expressions, we can, rather than do that, we just have a collection of all of them, and then we just pass the collection into instruments, and it will just load and unload them all as well. As you may not want to uh, instrument your functions while you're during runtime, during production, uh, typically something that's done more in uh, development, uh, because then you can see, as, as in development, you're more likely to, you're actually actively writing code that's calling these functions. So by instrumenting them, you can see uh, straight away when you've actually called a function incorrectly. So this is doing, this is like doing uh, type checking. Um, this is, except you're checking that the type of data you're passing to a function is in is meeting the specification uh, and you can switch it on and off uh, as you uh, as you find it useful. Uh, so I got this idea from uh, the uh, from Sean Caulfield from the work he did on the uh, closure. Um, uh, here we go. So the the next JDBC project. So uh, so if you have a look at them, if you have a look at the specifications for that, uh, it's quite an interesting project to have a look at. Ooh, let's make it bigger. So he's got this uh, specs uh, folder, uh, specs um, file. 
uh, in uh, in the namespace. So you've got the namespace for that, uh, and there's some of the requires. So we're just requiring the the application code that we're writing specs for. As for the uh, when it's doing the uh, fdef definitions. Uh, and then just got uh, a whole bunch of predicates, uh, predicates we're using, simple predicates we're just giving names to in there. And uh, there's quite a few of those. Uh, and so there's some of them was building up on each other. And then there's the actual function definitions <coughs> uh, to, uh, yeah, basically, I think all of these are just showing you like the args. So this is adding uh, documentation on here as well, but we can also instrument all of these. So when we're calling these functions, then uh, as we're developing, we can get feedback about whether we've given them the right uh, the right arguments. And some of the arguments are uh, more than just simple values. So it's very handy to get that fast feedback about whether we're calling all these functions that we've defined uh, correctly. And so in here, he's using a, a name just to list all the FDEF specifications and then just instrumenting them and uninstrumenting them or instrumenting them. Uh, there we go. So that's what that was a very uh, handy uh, example I got there as well. So I am looking out for more examples uh, of useful uh, little practices around spec as well. So I'll be adding those as I find them. Okay, uh, well, thank you very much for listening. Uh, that is kind of the basics of uh, generating spec and how to use that, how to use those generative tests in several different ways. Uh, so I'll keep developing that. I'll, I'd like to apply the specs and generative testing to the, the bank account uh, example I was working out as well uh, and develop uh, like a series of functions to, uh, to cover that. Alrighty. Well, there's no questions in the audience. So again, thank you very much for uh, joining. Uh, again, if you want to reach out to me via uh, Closure in Slack, it's usually the quickest way. And uh, there's lots of other really useful channels on there as well to get help. Uh, I certainly find that very useful for doing these things because a lot of the uh, a lot of the topics I'm covering here, I'm co I'm learning for the first time as well. So uh, thank you very much for joining me as I am learning and hope you are learning something too. Okay, I'll leave it there for now and uh, hope we all have a lovely weekend. It's, uh, it's sunny here where I am. Uh, so I'm going to uh, go into the garden and have a, a break from the computer. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Thanks, bye.